Before starting this video, I would like to thank for most of the information about the case. There's a lot of misleading facts about the Kurt shooting. She provides the true facts about the case. So definitely go follow her on Reddit and subscribe to her YouTube channel, which I will leave a link in the description below. And I would like to give credit to 2chan for digging up the information and uploading all the files about the case. My condolences go to the family of the victims. I would like to dedicate this part of the video to the victims who lost their life on this tragic day. May they rest in peace. On October 12th, at 11.48, Russell Go calls to the gun shop. The same place where he bought his Hudson Escort shotgun in late August. It is unknown what the call was about, but perhaps it was Russell Go asking about shotgun rounds. On October 13th, he went to another gun shop, called Sokol, and bought 150 rounds of shotgun cartridges. On October 15th, Rosico messages Alexander Mozeiko at 12.02 a.m. Alexander Mozeiko is the head teacher of his class group. He called in sick because he didn't attend school on the 15th and 16th of October. On October 13th, he went to another gun shop, called Sokol, and bought 150 rounds of shotgun cartridges.
Rosako is seen carrying his belongings to an abandoned area behind his house to burn it. Rosako takes the bus to college, not the one near his house but from a different one, it's unknown why. At this time, there's probably a school break, so Roslico can blend in easily. He is seen entering from the backside of the college to avoid the metal detectors and the security at the main entrance.
Rosliako enters the school building around 10 a.m. where he is seen carrying a black Nike backpack on his back where the homemade bomb is placed. A large black bag around his waist in which his Hudson Escort shotgun is placed. Molotov, an unknown liquid, homemade pipe bombs made out of firecrackers or IEDs with shrapnel wrapped around with tape. Tactical gloves, hunting knife. A small ammo bag, a sling, yellow earplugs, a mobile phone, passport, weapon license, student ID, pepper sprays, and lighter. Rosliako goes to the first floor, towards the restroom. He stores his equipment into an opening in the wall, or in the restroom itself. He waits around an hour and a half before exiting the restroom. Rosliako is seen checking his phone at this point, checking the time probably to make sure he can make it to the cafeteria in time. The lunch break starts around 11.30 or 11.40. In his mind, everything is planned and we can see he only has the black Nike backpack on him. There the bomb itself is placed. Rosliako is seen shaking hands with someone. People on the internet speculated that he had some part in the massacre. After a while, it was confirmed that he had nothing to do with the shooting. He is a lab technician who just recognized Vlad and knew him as many other students at the college. They just shook hands and that's it. After the bomb exploded, he rushed back into the college and helped the victims out of the building. Rosleko heads down to the ground floor, to the hallway near the library. Media claims that he wanted to place a padlock on the door to slow down people from fleeing through the exit. He didn't know that the library in the college was closed that day. After a minute and 36 seconds, Rosliko walks up to the first floor. Investigators were wondering what he was doing down there for a minute and 36 seconds. If you zoom in, you can see Rosliko's right hand going towards a fire extinguisher box. Rosliko placed a padlock on top of it. After the investigators viewed the camera footage, they found a padlock there. He probably abandoned this idea because the padlock didn't fit or he didn't want to cause any suspicion. Rosliko sets his backpack on a table in the hallway. At this moment, it is claimed he activated the bomb, setting the timer around 10 minutes. The bomb has an explosive force of more than 1 kilogram of TNT with shrapnel and metal inside it. Rosliko sits down and waits for the staff to open the cafeteria door and for the lunch break to begin as many students head towards the cafeteria during this time. He shook hands with some students. One of them is Heina, Rosliko's classmate, who said that Rosliko smiled at them.
Muslico stands up around 11.37, 7 to 8 minutes before the bomb is set to explode. He places the bomb on the table hanger or around the chair. Roslico exits the cafeteria around 11.39, heading towards the restroom on the first floor in a rush, which leaves him around 5-6 to six minutes to get prepared. He even took his jacket off to save some time. The bomb explodes around 11.44, 11.46. The bomb is so powerful that it completely destroys the main entrance to the college, which is made of glass mainly, knocks out the window's glass and the window's frames itself in the corridors nearby, even destroying cabinet doors in the hallway. Rosico placed the bomb on a frying pan 
which when detonated flew in the air and exploded with shrapnel and screws flying from the explosion. After the explosion occurred, Rostelko destroys the window in the restroom with the end of his shotgun grip and starts firing into the courtyard. This is all caught by a car's dash cam parked near the college. He kills one student from the window. Roslico exits the restroom and goes into the corridors. Kills another student and then heads towards the staircase. And starts firing as students fleeing on the staircase. Ludmila Ustenko, a teacher of the college, died at the age of 63. He shot Baklanova in this hallway. It is unclear which Baklanova he shot here. Both Svetlana, age of 57, and Anastasia, age of 26, died at the college that day. Roslico's shotgun jammed and he manually takes out the cartridge. We can see what Roslico has on his waist. A small ammo bag, homemade pipe bombs or IEDs. He left most of his ammunition in the restroom. Important thing to note is that Roslico isn't entering classrooms. He is just killing people who are in his way towards the library. Heading towards Rosliko is Alexander Mozeiko, who was the head teacher of Rosliko's college group. Rosliko shot him three times, the first shot near his left hand or near the stomach area, 
second one in his back and the final one to the head. He died at the age of 46. Mosaico is the final victim that Roslico kills with a shotgun. Rosloko heads to the ground floor, trying to open doors, cabinets, but they are all locked. Goes down the hallway, where he tried to lock the door with the padlock. Shoots out the window, hits nobody. At this point, Rosloko is off camera. It is unknown what he's doing at this point of time. After a while, he heads back towards the library door, lighting two pipe bombs on the way, which failed to detonate. One of them creating a huge cloud of smoke at the end of the hallway. We can see that he has a sling which is attached to the grip of his shotgun and goes under his shirt, down his back, onto his jeans or belt. This is so if anybody tried to take his weapon they would fail. We can see that Roslico has a hunting knife on the left side of his boot which he didn't use during the massacre. Rosliko fires shots at the locked door, which leads to a computer room or a class. Rosliko is seen standing, unknown if he's looking at his phone or how much ammunition he has left. Rosliko is supposedly shooting the fire alarm. Rosliko heads to the ground floor again. He is looking out a huge glass window, his shotgun jammed again where we can see him manually take out the cartridge. If we zoom in on his right hand, there are bruises on his fingers, caused by the recoil of the shotgun. People probably left the building already.
At this point of time, Roslico just wanders in the corridor. Roslico enters the computer room, shoots two monitors, and walks to the back of the classroom, sees that nobody is there, and turns around. This is the last footage of Roslico seen alive. After he leaves the computer room and enters the main library, he flips two tables. It is unclear if he flipped the tables at this moment or this moment. People speculated that he wanted a suicide picture like Eric Harris or wanted to be found right away, which could explain the licenses in his pocket. There are no cameras in the main library room. He commits suicide but not immediately. On photos, we can see that he has gunpowder on the right side of his cheek, which indicates that he had the end of a shotgun barrel close to his face. It is unknown at what time he committed suicide. He could have done it at the exact time as the Columbine killers did, because the time is almost the same. The Columbine killers committed suicide around 12.08, and Roslico is seen exiting at 11.56. Vladislav Roslico was born on the 2nd of May 2000. He was born in Kerch, Crimea. Roslico lived in the Arshinstevo district. He lived here with his mother, Galina, and father, Igor, before his parents divorced in 2010. From 2010, Roslico and his mother moved to the edge of Kerch and lived by themselves. His father sustained a head injury, after which he became disabled and aggressive towards Roslico, his mother, and other relatives. Roslico's early school years were good, claimed by Galina. She said in school he had grades from 3, 4, 5, which is pretty good for a student. In Russia, grades are explained like this. Galina claims that he really liked to draw. Even teachers noticed it in kindergarten. He drew very small details in every drawing, his mom said he got it from his father, who had beautiful drawings himself. They sent him to art lessons, but not for long, because their financial situation was difficult. She noticed that in his early years, he chose friends who had the same hobbies, interests as him. In his early years of school, he had a funny personality, cheerful, always fooled around, and his classmates said that he was fun to hang around with. He wasn't even upset or worried about people making fun of him. He himself would make fun of him. Even in this photo, Roslico was okay with it and laughed. Even in this photo, he made fun of himself. He used to play Sims 3 with his classmates and talked about how his character that he had created was pregnant with a baby girl. Roslico also had a YouTube channel. He was 14 at this time. Всем привет, с вами Big Slims. Это мой первый, я даже не знаю, как это назвать, говно какое-то, ну. Я попробую снять Skywars, я даже не знаю, настроил ли Мэдикам, я даже не знаю, говорю ли я сейчас микрофон, даже не знаю, что я сейчас говорю, ну. Ладно, ок. Though he had a funny personality, he would never talk back or be rude to the teachers. He would never talk back, and if he did, he would always whisper it so no one could hear it. He took part in a play called Snow Queen. He was a character named Kyle. He also started going to the gym around 8th and 9th grade. His classmates asked him why. He replied, just to work out. He was known to be a skinny thin guy. He used to drink alcohol in class and in the 7th grade he was taken to the hospital because he was under the influence or had alcohol poisoning. He got into trouble because he was at that time still a juvenile. He completed his school successfully and applied to Kerch Polytechnic. He applied as an installation, adjusting and maintenance of electrical equipment 
of industrial and civil buildings at the age of 15. At Kirch Polytechnical, his classmates described him as a non-conflict guy. He didn't have problems with anyone in his class. Many of them actually respected him, thought of him as a very self-sufficient man. No one ever bullied him in class or ever bullied him in the college, as the media claims. The media was saying that Vlad wanted to get revenge on the teachers, but fact of the matter is he was always praised and respected by his teachers. They made an example of him, like, quote, Vlad gets to leave class because he did everything in time, end of quote. They also described him as a very polite guy who always said please and thank you. There was a pepper spray incident once where someone sprayed it in the classroom. Then the teacher came and smelled it and started yelling at the class and asking who did it. Rostico took the blame even though he didn't do it and everybody in the class knew he didn't do it. At this time, he was also doing a practical course in a factory. He told his mother, quote, I talked to the people who worked there. I don't see a future in it, end of quote. Even though he had little interaction with his classmates, he told them that he wanted to be a soldier under a contract and said he would want to be placed in the center of action in the battle. When he told this to his classmates, they understood that he didn't value his life that much. Roslico said, quote, Who would you be if you just killed yourself? This way, you help your country and you're a soldier, which is a good thing. End of quote. And they asked, Isn't that dangerous? Roslico replied, quote, I'm not scared of danger because death is something just biological. After death, there is nothing. Death is the end and that's all. End of quote. He told his classmates that he had suicidal thoughts, but the only thing stopping him from doing it was his mother, or something in the future, that he will use these thoughts in combat. At the age of 16 years old, he started to get interested into true crime. On March 25, 2018, a user found Roslico in a VK group. The group was called the World of Maniacs and Serial Killers, the most popular true crime community on VK. The user texted him. Roslico deleted the chat logs from his profile, but the user agreed to show it. Some messages are missing.
I think this chat log shows the true colors of Rostakov's mind and emotions. It is a complete difference when talking to a stranger to suppose a girl he is meeting in real life. From not wanting to show his emotions to being completely transparent about everything. In fact, Rostakov did meet a girl in September of 2018. I will not say her name because she clearly doesn't want anything to do with this. Since all this happened, she hasn't done any media, interview, or anything. I told you I was here. What'd you do then? Ask me. <laughs> oh man, we didn't hear this. What is it, man? You guys want to go see a dead body? I'll kill you, I swear to God. She texted him two days before the massacre. We will never know what that was.
If we take a look at Rostelko's social media, it is unknown if he was depressed, but here are some of his social media posts. And the music he listened to. He also sent a Columbine edit to one of his friends, saying he should check it out. Сейчас, возможно, я найду видео, да, где этот, вот, это как бы одно типа из таких подобных видео, которые ему нравятся. His classmates also claim that he touched on nationalistic topics like the Nazi regime, Mein Kampf, but that he didn't support them. He claimed the skinheads aren't that bad, and in some way are right. He talked about how a YouTuber called Tessak, a Nazi YouTube blogger who is in prison right now, he was popular for his illegal fight against pedophiles. Even topics about serial killers, that they are geniuses. He admired them, but not for killing people but rather for planning everything out. One of the serial killers that he admired was Chikatilo. He also said that immigrants should leave, that they mix blood with us, that Slavs should be Slavs. His classmates tried to talk with him in the first few years of college, but stopped after a while and said, why break his comfort zone? They say it was hard to start a conversation with him. If there was a break in the conversation, he would automatically shut down. His grades were bad at the beginning of his first year at the college. He used to cheat on his test, but towards the end he studied very well and had good grades, and was the best student among his classmates. He used to play shooter games, for example, Doom, and in his class he played a mobile game about assembly and disassembly of a firearm. He told and showed his classmates that it was easy to make a bomb, that you can find everything online. He even talked about this in public and people told him to not talk about it that he is scaring people. 
his classmates thought it was just a phase that everybody has these types of thoughts in their lifetime. His mother claimed that his interest in firearms came from his dad because he had the same interest as well. His mother was aware of his weapon permit and the purchase of the shotgun and was against it. She didn't believe he would actually buy one. Roslico attended training for owning a weapon in July 2018. The training included 4 hours of theory, 2 hours of practice. It cost him about 4,000 rubles, which is about $62, instead of 6,000 rubles, which is $93. He claimed he had financial difficulties and the management gave him a discount. He tested his homemade bombs in an abandoned area near his house. It is claimed that he ordered all the materials and ingredients from AliExpress and other sites. People claimed that they heard loud explosions coming from the area, but said it was normal, because further away was an area known to people for going hunting. So gunfire and pops were regularly heard from the area. Vlad told his father once that he successfully made a bomb at home that he even tested it. A part of it was in the fridge for about a month, his mother didn't even notice it. Vladislav said the bomb was so powerful that the rock split. Igor, his father, told him to not do it anymore because he could blow himself up and his mother too. In less than 10 minutes, Roslico killed 21 people and injured more than 70 people. This was the greatest loss of life in the educational building since the Belson School siege incident, where 334 people lost their life. Russian's investigative committee initially classified the attack as terrorism, but later changed it to mass murder. The 
schools and cars were on lockdown during that day to prevent any further attacks. Students returned to the college on October 23rd. The day before the massacre, Ivan, a classmate of Rosliko, played a joke on his friend Dima and wrote the word trash on his backpack. Dima decided to take revenge on October 17th. At the beginning of the lunch break, he screwed Ivan's backpack to the gazebo in the college's courtyard. It seemed ridiculous to everyone, and almost half of Rosliko's group went to see how Ivan would try to remove his backpack. At that time, the explosion occurred and later the shooting began. The guys quickly fled from the courtyard. The joke saved their lives. Later that day, police destroyed the backpack because they thought it was another bomb. Надо куда-то заявить или я не знаю, блядь, но это типа не просто так, есть же доказательства. Нет его постоянно, он в игру эту играл по сбору оружия, блядь. Типа тихий ходил, постоянно его не видно. Ну, блядь, я не знаю, короче, ну нету его с понедельника. Чё ещё? Фотки 100% его. По разговорам, я думаю, типа видно было, что, ну, как бы этот челик не совсем людей любит и не знаю. Пацаны, все, пизда, это он. Будем что-то делать? Его не поймали, вы что, издеваетесь? Я тоже вот 4 года за одной партой помогал и тому подобное. Я ему помогал, он мне помогал. И вот сейчас вот такое, серьезно, это пиздец. И страничку ВК не зря, что он удалил. Подозреваемый. Что? А, сейчас, короче, я у друга сижу. Написано в ленточе. Подозреваемый в совершен... совершении теракта найден застрелен на втором этаже политехнического колледжа. Как-то раз мы с ним разговаривали на практике, и он сказал, типа, типа, ненавижу, и все это заебало, и вообще ненавижу этих людей, типа, ненавижу таких тупых, как у нас в политике учатся, и типа, говорил, было бы неплохо, типа, всех перестрелять и самому выпилиться. Я типа не подумал, ну как бы, я тоже, как бы, бы, были такие мысли иногда, когда типа хуево настроение, ну как бы не то, чтобы мысли там перестрелять или перебить, ну блядь, типа бывало хуево. Может я думал у него это какое-то типа выражение в каких-то эмоциях, там без этого самого, и что-то не придал этому значения особого. Что-то, блядь, аж ёкнуло, когда увидел фотку, блядь, сто процентов он. Ростик, я к этому еще добавлю то, что он раньше в начале курсов, ну там первый, второй, он же был помешан на теме Рика и Дилана, по-моему, или как их там, которые в Америке устроили подобную херню, тоже взрывали, стреляли, может кто помнит, в 91-м, по-моему, или в каком-то году. Вот он точно так же оделся, считай, точно так же стиле проявил себя. И вся эта херня срастается. Да, это я видел уже, Артем. Чтоб вы поняли, у нас металлоискатели, блядь, на оружие не отреагировали с бомбой. Охуенно, да? Политех лучше всех, блядь, нахуй, чем металлоискатели поставили. Если бы их не было, бы сейчас бы просто народ повыбегал бы весь уже бы давно-давно, и мало бы кто пострадал. Кстати, он мне рассказывал, типа, вот, знаешь, этих, э -э как их, блядь, маньяков, типа, все они, их всех, типа, называют психами, но они на самом деле, типа, умные, ну, как бы, и, и у них есть, типа, свои, эти, свои, какие-то, как это, а, э, блядь, все, я говорить не могу. Типа, то, что у них есть на это свои причины, и э, они делали все, типа, гениально, он прям восхищался этим. Мне это, конечно, немного напугало, но я не стал никуда говорить, типа, мало ли, у нас всяких разных позеров полно, думал, может, Влад тоже как-то это. Мне только что звонили. А, Артем, успокойся, его уже нет живых, как ты мог уже понять.
Так что вот тоже такое. Мне вот сейчас названивают с России один с телеканала НТВ. Вот, просят, чтобы я там всякие интервью давал. Вот, там на видео записался, типа, ну, как я вот это все рассказываю, типа, я очевидец и все прочее. Вот, откуда они берут эти все контакты, я хрен знает просто. Короче, просто забейте, пытайтесь подальше от этого отойти. Артем, он один был. Бля, пацаны, поймите, а, угроза, что с этим человеком мы учились 4 года, все. Надо это, пацаны, нас 19 О, осталось. А кто-то перед этим его с девочкой видел, ребят? Потому что я его видел с девочкой накануне, он был вроде веселый. Я видел его в пятницу или в четверг, когда я уезжал с девочкой, все, до этого, ну то есть... Во время учебного времени я его уже не видел. Ну, с понедельника я его не видел вообще. Ну, с пятницы я ехал на стрижку, и он был с девочкой. Но он вышел не на своей остановке, а девочка поехала дальше. И это очень было странно, потому что всегда он выходил, ну, то есть он ехал дольше меня на стадион. Но на этот раз он вышел гораздо раньше, где-то на АВ или где-то так, я его потерял из виду уже. Я еще думаю, этот челик вроде никогда, ну, типа, с девушками никаких отношений не имел. И я думаю, может, типа, он попробовал хотя, хотя бы раз в жизни что-то попробовал, и у него это, и у него, типа, не получилось, и он на грани срыва, вернее, на почве срыва вот такую херню совершил. Я не знаю, но в пятницу он вроде бы спокойно общался с ней в маршрутке, там он поздоровался с ней на остановке, общался вроде нормально. Но, возможно, он в субботу, воскресенье что-то с ней попробовал, она может ему его отшила. А до этого, я общаюсь с девахой одной из второго курса, он, получается, ей написал сообщение, типа, из разряда, ты, типа, с политеха с первого или со второго курса, да, пошли, типа, что тебе надо, типа, пошли ебаться, типа, зачем, типа, ну, типа, ты что, дебил, типа, пошли ебаться, типа, выебать я хочу, в таком плане. Я это не хотел раньше говорить, но сейчас уже, как вижу, есть смысл об этом сказать. Вот честно говоря, мне жаль, что, конечно, это произошло. Мне жаль, что я там был он, как бы зачастник к этому. Но то, что его нет уже с нами, ну, скажем так, в этом мире, это уже меня как бы и радует. Вот. А он был один, то вопрос. А второй вопрос, если он был не один, то реально ли это он покончил с собой? Как я и говорил, он собирался устроить такая, такую херню и выпилиться самому. Короче, пацаны, читаю из телеграмма, да, там, типа, э, прислали фотку, типа, Влада, вот это, он подписан был, это он с оружием спускается на первом этаж. Его нашли застрелен на втором этаже. Как стало известно, канал, ну, вот такой молодого человека зовут Владислав Разляков, он является студентом этого колледжа. 8 сентября он получил разрешение на ношение оружия, 12 октября приобрел оружие и купил 150 патронов. Число погибших увеличено до 18. Его зовут Владислав Разляков, 2000 года рождения. Все. Честно говоря, я не удивлен. Но единственное, за что обидно, что он не написал, допустим, в нашей группе, типа, мол, ребята, прогуляйте сегодня пары. Ну, как видишь, можно. Ну, если не у нас, то, допустим, в Симферополе точно можно. Про Севастополь я уже молчу. Ну, как видишь, можно лицензионное оружие купить, которое реально будет боевым. Пацаны, у меня все-таки ощущение, что он и нашего куратора мог застрелить. Серьезно. Во-первых, куратор не выходит в онлайн, он не отвечает на звонки. Была стрельба по колледжу. Куратора нет ни в сети, да за него звониться нельзя. Так что у меня ощущение, что он и куратора мог. Throughout Russia and other countries, hundreds of people gathered for memorials for the victims. In Moscow, the Memorial of Courage 
in the Alexander Garden was decorated with flowers. A makeshift memorial was created outside of the school for residents and survivors to bring flowers and toys. And the open memorial and funeral for the victims was held in the center square of Kerch. With a speech by Sergei Axiano, who told the crowd, quote, We don't want to talk. We want to weep. The history of Crimea will be divided into two, before and after October 17th. We need to be strong and we need to be brave. End of quote. Around 20,000 people were estimated to have attended the public funeral in Kerch. Vladimir Konstantino announced that the victims' families would receive financial compensation, which was around 1 million rubles. Лет тебе 18. Примерно, чтобы картину понимать, как это для тебя началось. Ну, я стоял на улице, ну, во дворе. Произошел взрыв. Такой я прям, я не знаю. Ну, мы подошли ближе с однокопником посмотреть. Думали, там, петарда какая-то взорвалась. Не, не знаю. Ну, это громко было очень, как я ну, понял. Да. да. Там все окна повылетали, и эти стены начали вот так дрожать. Все бегут, рут. Потом этот рослеков начинает выбивать окно на втором этаже в туалете. Ну, с ручки дробовикам. Начинает целиться. Я тоже не обратил на это внимание, потому что я привык к этим к таким приколам просто. Повернулся в правую сторону, и он сразу мне в голову попал. Это у тебя? Потом мы начали бежать. Потом я чувствовал, что у меня со вторей кровь начинает так струить, ну, струя течь. Присели на лавочку, я начал там говорить, что я уже умираю. Но моего однокопника унесла девочка первого курса. Меня некому было унести, потому что все обещали, никто не обращал внимания. Ну как не обращали, просто у всех паника была. Ну это понятно, да. Но я думал, у меня сухо течет, потом его закрыл ухо, а оно все равно тепло. Я пошел по клумбам, там где у деревья, и упал. Потом подбежала бухгалтер или секретарь, и они вдвоем тащили вот на эту лавочку как раз. Вот оттуда, получается, через те ворота, вот так меня тащили. Ну вот через эти ворота тебя сюда при 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 привели, да? Нет, через те. Через дальние? Да. Это вот, наверное, тоже, да? Мама была жалко, потому что всех родителей, ну, тех, кто это было непередаваемо. Теперь все крики в больнице вообще. Это было страшнее, чем здесь. Когда вот эти девочки, ну, контуженные кричат. Все в крови, не. Спасибо тебе большое. Да, И поправляйся. Да вам спасибо. Давай. Спасибо. Even President Putin reacted to the tragedy and offered his condolences to the families and says the reason of the tragedy, quote, is globalization, social media, and the internet, and that everything started with the tragic events in the USA. We are not creating a healthy internet connection for young people, which leads to tragedies of this kind, end of quote. After the massacre, the school was completely renovated and a memorial was built for the victims of the tragedy. Some of Kurt's citizens still think that Rosco didn't do this alone, but investigators claim that he did everything by himself. Rosco's mother, Galina, worked as a nurse in the Kurt's hospital. She was trying to call her son during this time. Later, when investigators told her that her son was the perpetrator, she tried to jump out of a window, but stopped her. As for Rosco's father, he was robbed and beaten in September of 2019. Igor filed a police report but blamed only one of two perpetrators who robbed him and took his money, about 159 US dollars. The second one who beat Igor walks free. After the incident, Igor was hospitalized with a traumatic brain injury and a month later he died. Igor's mother, Rosliko's grandmother, added last summer her son also lost a lot of weight was hospitalized with gastrointestinal bleeding and had more mental issues. Igor died on October 24, 2019. Простите, это все интернет, Ивон. Интернет, ноутбук и замкнутость полная. Я православный верующий. Дьявол, больше ни к чему. А мама его была свидетель Игова. Раньше он занимался только детской литературой и все. Хомячками, морскими свинками, какими-то крысками декоративными выращивал. Там, машинками, там, какими-то детскими. 
Я ребенком был. Я только что весь день уже три сутки сижу там со следователем, которыми разговаривают с его учениками, которые одногруппниками. Мне сказали, что он был замкнутый, он ни с кем не дружил. Мне сказали, что он, он застрелился, он труп. Трупов уже нельзя не прощать, и прощать или не прощать. Я ничего не могу сказать. Он застрелился. Он выстрелился в голову, как мне сказали. Спектр. Больше я ничего не видел. Они без меня 8 лет жили. Приходил к моей маме, ну, к папе. Его мама со мной не хотела общаться. Хоть и мертвый, я его люблю. Он мой крок, кровинушка, мой родной сын. Я мечтал о нем. Жестокие игры такие показывают. То холод убивает, то да. там еще то закололи, то еще. Ну тогда еще не вышел был. В шестом ну, на классе так было. Мне очень не нравилось это. Ну не на что же можно еще можно посмотреть-то. Ну как бабушка, я хочу. Надо статья какая-то для занятия подготовить, найти там. Я пользуюсь ноутбуком. Еще могу посмотреть, какой я хочу. И игры были жестокие, это даже в то время и мы были очень жестокие игры. Кстати, я всю ночь проснусь и думаю, а зачем он это сделал? занятия он целый год один он где-то возле стадиона живет но силовыми этими упражнениями занимался потом до денег то мало дорого стоит оставил дома растяжки всякие делал вот бабушки умеет делать ну разные упражнения на растяжку Просто мой большой такой высокий, мать отдала ему свою кровать. Он спал на ее кровати. Она, мама, просто маленькая. Вот. Ну, надолго, подолгу никогда не приходилось пообщаться, понимаете? То он торопится куда-то там. То он, если к нам приходил, то выкупался. Обсох, пошел со сон, поговорил, побудь с нами еще, поговори, порассказывай что-нибудь интересное, что с интересного там на занятиях, а ничего интересного нету. Не шел на разговоры так вот сюда. Мне очень жаль. Ждать я у нее был злой. Это мой внук. Но не был он злой. Но он был одинокий. Влад очень часто находился один дома. Как бы одиночка. У меня друзей я не видел особенно. Если приходил к нам, то приходил один. Я спрашиваю, что друзья есть? Он говорит, что... Ну что, ну, ну никакие друзья. Я говорю, ну как, вот в школу ездите вместе на занятия? С занятия. Да, ну такие, говорит, есть. Сказать, что недоразвитый, не скажешь. Очень скрытный был такой, неразговорчивый. Я просто людей прошу прощения. Мы живем отдельно. Мы здесь с дедом живем, а он с отцом здесь жил. Потом мать с ним ушла на другую улицу, на Льва Толстого. И так часто мы не могли видеться. Приходил по субботам или по воскресеньям. 
Папа будет покупаться и быстренько домой. Спрашиваю, как у тебя дела, какие друзья там те, кто... Ну, слова не вытащишь из него. Вы знаете, вся причина, мне кажется, в том, что у него был ноутбук, и он от него никуда. Он никуда от него не уходил. Мама запрещала ему общаться с отцом или кто? Нет, она совершенно не запрещала. Она мало внимания ему уделяла. Она была действительно свидетелем его, но она такого ну, не было, что она, она не разрешала ему нет. Это глупость просто. Забрал все фотографии, буквально все фотографии Папа. забрал. Потом спросил, как там. Бабушка, можно я возьму твои фотографии, посмотрю? Я хочу их распечатать, чтобы у меня такие. Вот. И у, у тебя тоже, дедушка, у нас два альбома. И потом я вам отдам их. Я еще и сама на учете в больницы. Сказали, что моя невестка тоже там лежит сейчас. Это мама Владика, да? Да, мама Владика. Вот мне кажется, вся беда в том, что не было друзей, и вот он с этим ноутбуком своим не верю просто. Мне жалко людей. И его жалко. Как вспомнишь, потому что это он сделал всю душу, душу просто. In 2019, a year later after the massacre, the college's applicants influxed. Everyone wanted to study in the infamous college. More than 150 people couldn't get into that year. GPA was raised from 3 to 4.7 for applicants, although in previous years there was a shortage of students. According to media, Olga Grishchenko passed on the 24th of July 2019. She was a little older than 60 and worked 15 years as an economics teacher at the college. On October 17th, Olga with a student named Artyom went down from the third floor when they came under fire from Rosalko's shotgun. Olga was seriously injured in her stomach and put pressure on the wound with her journal about her students' grades. Artyom assisted her with help, reported that Olga left the hospital in June and spent her last days with her family. Doctors fought for a life for more than nine months. After the massacre, Rosalko's case inspired others to commit horrific acts in Russia. 